everyone, and welcome to our Strengthening SOAR Applications series. This is the third and final webinar in this series. Today's topic is the SOAR process, how SSA in Trenton supports quality SOAR applications. Today's webinar is presented by the SAMHSA SOAR Technical Assistance Center at Policy Research Associates under contract to the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration of the United States Department of Health and Human Services. My name is Pam Hines, Senior Project Associate of the SOAR TA Center, and I will be moderating today's event. Providing today's welcome is Kristen Lutfer, Director of SAMHSA SOAR Technical Assistance Center. Kristen? Thanks, Pam, and uh, welcome, everyone. We really appreciate you joining us today for the third webinar in our Strengthening Applications series. Uh, if you missed the first two webinars, we hope that you'll um, go back on our website and check those archived recordings. Um, they uh, were excellent, and so we encourage you to check them out if you missed them. So today's webinar will focus on strategies for strengthening the SOAR process through building strong relationships with SSA. Um, and we're very excited about our speakers today. Um, you're going to hear from a SOAR provider and an SSA specialist who will speak of their um, collaboration, which has been making a huge difference in New Jersey. So thank you for participating in our webinar series. Kim. Thank you. Just a brief disclaimer, we'd like to remind you that this training is supported by the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration and the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. The contents of this presentation do not necessarily reflect the views or policies of SAMHSA or DHHS. The training should not be considered substitutes for individualized care and treatment decisions. A few housekeeping items before we begin. Your lines, lines will be muted throughout the webinar. This webinar is being recorded and will be available for download on the SOAR website in about a week. Right now, you may download the PowerPoint slides by going to the SOAR website, soarworks.painc.com. Click the webinar on the left side of the screen, which will bring you to today's presentation. Here you can download the slides and two other handouts. You will receive a brief evaluation at the conclusion of the webinar that we ask you to complete. In fact, the series was chosen based on your evaluations. And finally, we will save all questions until the end of the presentations and will review instructions for asking questions via the WebEx Q&A pod. Just a few objectives. Objective, it is our intent that by the end of this webinar, you will learn how to negotiate an effective SOAR process in collaboration with your local Social Security office, and how to begin and sustain a strong relationship with that office. And again, how to build these lasting relationships. So you'll get some great tips from our presenters on how to do that um, to be able to submit quality applications. So our agenda, first hearing from David Van Okaroff, District Manager with the SSA Field Office in Trenton, New Jersey. He will talk about how to establish, implement, and sustain a SOAR process. And then you will hear from Diane Herko, Senior Co uh, SOAR Coordinator and SOAR Local Lead with the Fay Guidance Center in Hamilton, New Jersey, which is a suburb of Trenton. After, we'll have plenty of times for Q&A, which is facilitated here at the SOAR TA Center. So, without further ado, I would like to turn it over to David, who will begin our conversation today. David? And, and good afternoon, everybody. Um, thank you for joining us. Uh, with me, I have Diane Herko, and uh, hopefully we'll present to you something that will be valuable that you can hopefully recreate in your own community. And, uh, and really make it work, um, and that, that's what it's about. It's, it's a collaborative process that we've, I think, we've sustained through a number of years and made it work. So let me just kind of take you back, back background of um, what we did here in Mercer County, New Jersey, in Trenton, New Jersey, and how we did it, and why it's been so successful. We believe in assisting. Uh, hundreds and thousands of people uh, that have been experiencing homelessness or at risk of homelessness. Um, so summer, uh, end of 08, beginning of 09, um, a number of uh, entities came together. The, the Social Security Office, uh, which I'm a part of, uh, the Mercer Alliance and Homelessness, which is a local organization here, um, 
various state and local agencies all began working together to with the goal to end homelessness in Murray County. Okay. Uh, we created a standing committee, uh, which was critical. And we had a lot of people in decision-making uh, roles that, uh, that really uh, attended these meetings and continue to do so to this, uh, to this day. And I think that's what has sustained us now going on for uh, eight years. Um, in, in, in bringing the success um, that, that we've had. Um, so the challenges. Um, again, uh, you know, a, a lot of you are familiar with these challenges, but uh, it, it really behooves uh, to, to repeat, uh, you know, what we're facing uh, and the people that we are serving uh, it, why it's so difficult. The contact, really, information is, is the most difficult. Myself being a district manager for Social Security, we had a very difficult time um, contacting people that were uh, homeless or at risk of homelessness. We um, our agencies, social agencies, uh, county welfare agencies would make referrals to my office, but quite often these people would not be able to make it in. Uh, because of lack of transportation um, in the in the county, or uh, for various other reasons, they never end up. So they would fall through the cracks. That that's really what was happening here um, before we started the SOAR process. Uh, completing and from uh, applications, um, our folks are probably not the best historians no. uh, because of various issues in their life. Um, and um, it's where the sort worker, and again, sitting here with Diane, uh, really comes in who is able to, in a lot of instances, really piece together their life and their story for Social Security and for DDS in order to make this um, a more complete application than certainly they would be able to do it on their own or even sit with one of my claims representatives uh, in the office. So, uh, you know, Mercer County Store Project, we initiated uh, and committed to the outreach and uh, getting the application and assistance that all the parties involved needed. Um, and it's, it, 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 that's been the critical piece. It's really that two way communication uh, between the Social Security Administration and the SOAR caseworker that has worked for us. And if you have any questions, we're going to have a Q&A at the end of the presentation. After my presentation, Diane is going to have a presentation. Mm -hmm. So, And then we'll have about a half hour to really answer a lot of questions that you can post um, on the Q&A uh, site. Collaboration. And uh, as you see in, in a lot of our slides, the title is, is Communication and Collaboration, and, and that's really uh, what, what, uh, what it's all about and the, the sustainability of, of the SOAR process. Um, in terms of goals, uh, we have to locate uh, the homeless individuals who potentially qualify for benefits. Uh, again, a lot of that, a friend here, Diane, does that. Various other groups make referrals, uh, such as County Board of Social Services, the local soup kitchen, um, uh, rescue missions, um, hospitals, um, you know, shelters, and and, uh, and entities of that nature. So that's that was the goal. Um, our outreach efforts. Um, we attend. These are just some of the events that we. Uh, really been a part of and have tried to uh, engage um, potential clients. Uh, Project Homeless Connect, we recently had a point in time survey, but Project Homeless Connect, um, we've uh, had them um, twice a year, one in the summer, one in the winter, and we saw hundreds, thousands of people uh, from around Mercer County, and sometimes they would even come to other counties as far away as 
uh, Philadelphia, we've had folks uh, at, at, the, at these events um, and, uh, you know, really been able to get the information uh, about them, how to contact them. Um, and uh, as the, Diane pointed out earlier, it's really about a total uh, essence, not just in terms of Social Security. It begins with Social Security, but suddenly it's a lot more and Social Security in terms of... Um, it is. It, it all comes down to uh, the one-stop event. It comes down to gathering as much information as you can, uh, doing an assessment, what types of ID do they have, do they need, are they eligible for any um, local um, benefits um, through the Board of Social Services, including emergency housing. You know, have ever applied for Social Security disability before, um, and we just move on. There's there's just so much information that you can glean in order to help them in the smallest of ways. But in the end, say that one birth certificate is could, it could be what's holding them back from supportive permanent supportive housing. So Project Homeless Connect is just a wonderful event, and people do come from all over. Thanks, Diane. And and uh, the in terms of communication, we're in if not daily communication with the social uh, with the store uh, case workers such as Diane and we others Andrea and and various other folks. Yeah. Um, but we we discuss you know initial claims. We discuss appeals. We discuss uh, applications for a social security card. That's the SS5 um, and various other programmatic uh, information as it relates possibly to Social Security or in totality as it relates to housing um, and various other um, aspects of uh, benefits. So it, 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 it goes beyond. It, it's really total commitment to the part of the SOAR caseworker as well as um, Social Security Administration. Uh, we've been to the stand down and, and really have um, it's on the project of, of homeless veterans uh, very seriously in trying to assist them either through VA, uh, we have the local Trenton Vet Center here uh, in Mercer County, we have the County um, Veterans Administration Outreach. Um, we've gotten referrals from them as well, and we've been able to, again, uh, provide in certain instances food shelter, clothing, uh, some of various other things that uh, VA has been able to, to uh, provide to us uh, in partnership through this sort of um, collaborative that we have here in uh, Mercer County. Um, so, uh, ongoing communication. Um, the server is really the lead, uh, such as Diane. Uh, they're the liaison for any issues or concerns uh, that the person may have, um, and it all starts with the with the caseworker. Um, the SA lead person. Uh, you have to have a committed. You have to first of all try to get a um, to find who your partner is within the local Social Security office. Um, if you know that person already, that's great. You know, continue working with them. If you don't, you may want to, you know, go in, introduce yourself, explain what the project is about. Um, most uh, offices have a district manager such as myself. Um, you want that management buy-in. You want that management buy-in because that's where the resources will uh, be allocated. Um, in a lot of instances, uh, myself, my assistant, and various other people will assist Diane with any questions or concerns that she may have um, if I'm not around or if another person is not around. We have DS on board. The local uh, Trenton DDS um, is very important part of this because if there are issues, uh, Diane, myself, and other folks can um, call the DDS examiner and DDS uh, manager for assistance that we may have on a particular claim um, uh, or an issue that we may be having w 
with a, with a certain client. Um, and certainly the claims specialist or the claims representative in a field office, we have a dedicated person um, that really deals with a lot of the information that a, a SOAR caseworker such as Diane brings into us. It's funneled to a person who's been doing it for the last seven or eight years. She knows exactly all the flags to put on the system internally that we have to uh, flag for DDS. She knows how to code them, how to take the applications that then has submitted online. Um, and again, as I mentioned earlier, it's the constant daily, weekly communications. We go over, um, you know, in cases, uh, future cases with them um, almost on a weekly basis. Uh, and during the week, if there are issues uh, that Diane's having with a client or sitting with a client, she's able to pick up the phone to the local office and uh, get the information that she needs in order to complete or proceed with the claim. At that moment. <laughs> that's, that's the critical part because you know, without having access to the information, it would be hard to know where um, the claim is headed or if the person already has a claim pending, perhaps there's an appeal that needs to be filed perhaps additional medical evidence that can be submitted, or um, Diane can become an re authorized representative um, uh, to a claim that's already been submitted, but really not submitted in a sore process way. Right. I've run into situations where, uh, back to the, uh, the poor story, and we've had individuals come to me, and I've been able to call the local Social Security office, come to find out that person's at the hearing and has an attorney working with them. So, um, there, and what's wonderful is I can literally pick up the phone anytime I have a question or a concern, and there is one claim specialist there um, that I've developed rapport with. We have good communication. They have always been able to assist me um, where I have called. Uh, collaboration. Uh, we uh, initially, again, when we were setting up our collaborative, the SOAR uh, Mercer County and Trenton Collaborative, we reached out to local hospitals, explained to them the SOAR process, um, and asked them for assistance. Um, and uh, they were all in on, um, you know, basically understood what we were trying to do, uh, agreed to assist us. And even uh, uh, most of the time, or even all the time, all provide the time. us uh, uh, it, it, medical records free of charge, which normally they would be charging. So that by the time the uh, Diane puts her entire package together, we pretty much have, have um, a very good idea of where the person has been, and certainly a lot of medical records that she's been able to get through this hospital collaborative that we have here in uh, Trenton, uh, Mercer County. Um, we have something called, which we created, it's a multi-provider release, and again, uh, I believe uh, Pam mentioned all of this information will be uh, um, uh, on their website, and it's also, if you look on the top, there's a New Jersey store process and the multi-agency release form It's on the upper left-hand corner of your screen, and it's also available on the uh, website. Um, it's basically a HIPAA compliant form that allows um, a SOAR caseworker to obtain uh, information from multiple hospitals uh, and uh, um, other agencies that participate in this process that agreed to become part of the SOAR uh, Mercer County collaborative process. Okay. And uh, again, it makes it a lot easier in order for us to get the, the, the medical records instead of having to sign uh, you know, 10 or 20 release forms based on when the, 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 the person would be. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's the interagency uh, collaborative. And again, it's, a, at, the, it's at the top uh, of your screen and also on the website. Uh, you'll be able to get that if you want to modify. And really, of the information that we're presenting, it's, it's, it's always been a work in progress. It's a living document that we have, both the agency release, the SOAR 
I think Jersey Store process, the Transcend Store process, uh, we've always tried to modify it and tweak it to whatever works. Um, we've actually used it in, in, in some other contexts and stuff, but it's always to make it better. You know, how do we make this better for the client? Uh, we work to get better with the store caseworker um, to make sure that um, the process is working for uh, for everybody, but main, mainly for the client. Um, so the statewide SOAR process, uh, which obviously came out from uh, Trenton, from Mercer County, New Jersey here, uh, it was put into place um, in 2009 with the approval of our regional office in New York. Um, down to the area office for New Jersey, for the state of New Jersey. And uh, again, like I said, it's a living document that we we are constantly modifying it and improving it and making it better. Okay. Um, so again, it's very important to get the blessing and the input and buy-in from people within Social Security, the liaisons, uh, from regional office, area office, and, and things like that, that they believe in the process. And certainly, as we do here, both Diane and I are very committed to this process and making it work and make sure that it works for the people of New Jersey. Um, we have, um, if, if there are paper uh, environment where, for some reason, uh, uh, Diane can't uh, complete the online portion, most of the applications, are completed online. Is that right, Diane? That is right. So, um, and usually Diane either mails it or put in uh, any paper uh, applications that are not, uh, that she cannot complete online. Um, and again, most of the application that the workflow process is is in the, in the upper left hand corner or also on the website. Um, so you'll be able to see exactly what forms are needed if you're not familiar. Most of you, I'm sure, are familiar with all the forms and everything. Um, and, uh, the, you know, the paper portion of that form, uh, the SSI, unfortunately, is still a paper portion, uh, which hopefully this year, from what I understand, we will have an online SSI application as well, which will make things a lot wonderful. easier. Which makes things a lot easier and will be much better. And uh, Diane said that, that it would definitely welcome that. Um, yeah, so uh, the local uh, SOAR provider uh, clarifies any missing information, unclear information, or incomplete information. Uh, Diane submits a 1696 uh, to become an authorized rep, and and that's where that that's why when she spoke about that, it, it's more than just Social Security. It's it's really assisting the person in totality. With, with housing, it starts with Social Security because that's where the funds will come from. But in totality, um, uh, you know, how to assist this person. Um, we flag these cases with a homeless flag, um, and this way DDS is aware uh, that this is a homeless process and it gets treated in that manner uh, according to SSA policies and procedures. If there's protective filing, that would usually uh, send us in a 3288 with a 1696. Yeah. And, uh, we're able to uh, get that protective filing and also uh, make her an authorized representative. And that's where the, the really the ball starts rolling. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Even when I call in to ask questions and they have those forms that I've prefaxed over, if appropriate, we get that. Protective filing date set then and there. Okay, so that's that's really important because while Diane is developing the case, the client is protected um, in terms of uh, the time that it takes really to get some of the medical information and um, set up an appointment or you know with the client if Diane has to go to a soup kitchen or. A, or the rescue mission or one of those places, clients already been protected 
with uh, with the lead uh, with the lead time. And obviously, if um, there is an allowance on the claim, the client gets paid back um, to the appropriate date uh, of protected file. That yeah. said. Uh, the, um, we identify these cases as the SOAR project. Uh, we have the consent information. Uh, the field office uh, says, well, see, it, uh, this is where we modify this a little. We had it originally set up that the field office would set fax back the information within five days. In our business process, we've actually set up where the can pick up the phone and call us directly, like we mentioned before. And I think that's been the critical part in, um, in a good quality application. It definitely is. It definitely, that's my guide. Um, we, um, we review the application for completeness. Um, we uh, assist uh, with any questions that Diane may have. Um, we kind of go through and make sure that if it's a work history, we look both for SSDI and SSI. Uh, we've had several retirement uh, applications as well uh, because the person was of age. Um, and we were able to actually file both for retirement and disability and SSI in some cases. Uh, so that has worked out, uh, you know, good as well. Because we have a lot of people that have a good work history it's just that circumstances happened and, uh, you know, something happened and um, they became homeless. But in the past, they've had a substantial work history and been able to get a really good benefits uh, for them from SSDI as well. Um, we established protective filing for 60 days. Usually applications come in much earlier than that from Diane. Mm -hmm. um, and we're able to get that, uh, you know, going as fast as possible. Obviously, the whole idea is how do we get the decision as quickly as possible so that the person uh, can benefit by it as soon as possible, and that's really the key. Um, I mentioned earlier, we um, assist applicants, uh, Diane, really, Andrea, and various other SOAR partners with both SI, uh, the supplemental screen, Come and the traditional disability, Social Security disability, the SSDI. Um, the SDI, uh, the applications are submitted online, um, and Diane's uh, an expert on that already, and she's actually assisted me in teaching various other uh, people in, in the Mercer County area of how to uh, file uh, Social Security applications uh, online. I uh, mentioned the SI portion of it is still uh, a paper application. Okay. I'm just going quickly through it. The online process, uh, Diane submits the online process after discussing the case with us. Um, and uh, it, it, it electronically signs the SSI portion of the uh, process. Uh, that gets uh, sent directly to us. The remark Diane usually puts in there that it's a sore claim. I do always. Um, and and this is a kind of it gives us a clue that uh, we have a sore claim and uh, that uh, uh, to be on the lookout for because there's two separate claims. Although there's an uh, SSDI claim, we know that we're waiting for an SSI claim as well. Um, and that, again, as we discussed through the collaborative SOAR process, was a little bit of a challenge initially because um, we were uh, the clients were upset and the SOAR case workers were upset because some of the clients that don't have a work history were getting denials and they were and couldn't understand why an immediate denial came in when they just filed an application. And that's where we worked out that it's, you know, to kind of hold back and to make sure that they understand that it's only the SSDI portion that was denied and not to go into a panic mode. And the SSI portion will still be evaluated based on the merits of the case and disability, certainly. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, we submit the Internet uh, Disability Report with the application. They now rolled it all into one application, and once SSI comes on board, it's going to be all one application kind of uh, streamlined. The SA-827, that's the authorization for release of medical information. Um, Diane usually brings that in and sends that in with the package. Actually, right. Uh, so that's... Just a sentence. Yeah. Um, moving right along, we have a sort checklist that usually goes on top of the application that Diane mails in or brings it in, and that makes it a lot easier for us. And you'll see that in your New Jersey SOAR um, process, uh, and you can modify it for your own needs. Um, it really helps us to kind of hone in on what we need, what forms we're looking for, and to make sure that we cover all our bases in terms of this uh, claim and this client in order to be able to further assist this client. Uh, we talked about the A27. Uh, if there, for some reason, the computer is not working, we use the, the, the 3368 in conjunction with the I-3368. If a client uh, has HIV, uh, we also fill out the 4814 uh, form. Mm -hmm. and, uh, again, that's a paper form that uh, usually Diane puts into her package for us, for the Social Security Administration. The mission report, um, although it is generally not necessary for individuals in Diane's experience, Right. Um, I fill a function report out um, with each individual that I work with, as well as the third-party report. Um, I find that if I don't fill it out, Social Security or DS is going to ask me to later down the road um, anyway. So I do like to sit down and spend time complete the function report, and sometimes I, I, I will deliberately take two different days to do it to make sure I'm really getting the full picture of the individual. Um, but yes, I do complete that for all individuals. And, and that really helps, uh, you know, DDS in order to make a better informed decision. And you don't have to recontact the client, which, as I said, sometimes could be a very difficult and challenging thing to do. Um, we only get an 8510 um, to entertain other information. Again, it's optional. Not everything that, not every form that we discuss is going to be mandatory. Uh, please make sure to modify that to your own needs working with your local Social Security office. Uh, 1696 is the uh, appointment of representative, and this is the, really the key. This is what gives us the ability to talk to a store caseworkers such as Diane uh, to collaborate with her um, in order to assist uh, the client in a HIPAA-protected way uh, so that they understand that um, the client is giving permission to this caseworker in order to be able to assist them, or even, honestly, in the future as well, as long as that relationship exists with the agency and with, with the client. It also ensures that I am CC'd on anything that the client receives in mail, um, which is kind of critical because oftentimes um, the individuals I, I work for They'll use the soup kitchen um, as their mailing address or the doctor, but they won't check to see if their mail's there, um, or they'll get their mail and they won't open it, or they lose it. So this way, when that um, comes along or any other um, information that DDS is looking for, I'm on top of it. Thanks, Diane. Mm -hmm. uh, so submission of all the documents. The, the claim goes to DDS. Um, work, again, very closely with Diane on our Friday afternoon, or we uh, call in order to identify the DDS adjudicator. Um, that's quite critical in order to pick up the, uh, where we, uh, where Social Security law field office leaves off, so that this case worker can continue that collaborative uh, a process with the DDS adjudicator. Uh, we obviously use uh, the ERE, the Electronic Records Express. We did a, a SOAR webinar, uh, I guess about six years ago now, um, about Electronic Records Express, the ERE, and how important it is for the uh, SOAR case 
worker to get that barcoded cover sheet mm -hmm. in order to submit all the documents that she has been able to obtain electronically straight to DDS. Because those are the people that really make the decision, need the medical documents in order to see the whole picture for the client um, instead of something that you know may not be good enough. Right. And in addition to the adjudicator, did you provide me with the supervisor's name and television or television telephone number as well, just in case for some reason I cannot get off the path to the adjudicator? Yeah, you always have a backup. And again, that's that's part of that communica ongoing communication, collaborative experience that we have here mm -hmm. uh, is is critical because uh, not the person that's making the medical decision, the DDS folks are. So if if Diane cannot reach the the, the actual DDS adjudicator, she has another avenue to go to for uh, for that particular case that can assist her with the ERE barcode or just answer a question about the status of an application or whether certain medical documents were received or not, mm -hmm. and does anything else that's needed. Um, that collaborates very closely with the DDS adjudicators in terms of the consultative examination. Uh, because again, if a paper is sent or a mail is sent to the soup kitchen or whatever, that may not get to the client. But I am aware of, uh, you know, a consultative examination that's coming up or something else. Then he's able to work out the arrangements or uh, in order to facilitate that process if um, that is required. Um, okay. And you know, in our uh, SOAR model, in in the Trenton SOAR model, we're trying to actually avoid CE examinations by having enough medical documents uh, to provide um, to, to DDS so that hopefully they may not need um, the SOAR, uh, hopefully they will not need the consultative examination or CE from, uh, from our clients. Um, we have the medical summary, uh, you know, in accordance with the SOAR training and process. Uh, the report includes any information and clarifying. Um, initially, we had them all reviewed by our um, SOAR lead person, but Diane has been doing this for eight years now. Um, our other SOAR worker, Andrea, she was doing it for about seven, eight years as well. Mm -hmm. So we have very experienced SOAR people uh, in this collaborative process that um, are able to provide a great um, MSR. Uh, for us. Uh, go and follow up. We, have, as I said, uh, you know, we originally had uh, monthly meetings. Uh, we have um, we have now uh, bi-monthly meetings uh, in order to continue facilitating this process. Um, the the cases, uh, the decisions do t sometimes take upwards of 120 days. We are hoping for less. We've had some less, but uh, obviously we have a lot of claims, uh, uh, especially in the cities where we are here in Trenton. We have uh, thousands of claims pending, so we, we, we try to do them as quickly as possible. Obviously, the more complete package, the better it is uh, that we can uh, you know move that along or facilitate that as quickly as possible. Um, Again, uh, I just want to end uh, you know, my portion with it's it's really great to have somebody, a partner like Diane and, um, and Andrea that we had uh, in in working in this and understanding how important it is collaboration. I I, I think that's the key. Um, I'm always able to contact her. She's able to contact me uh, for many many years in order to assist our clients, and I think that's what makes a difference uh, in the Trenton model. It's that collaboration and communication. So I'll turn it over to Diane for her presentation, and we'll take questions. Thank you, David. First and foremost, um, I do want to say that if it were not for David, we would not be successful with SOAR in Mercer County, and our collaboration would not look anything like it does. 
um, David ha really has been our biggest advocate, our biggest fan, and I hope that he and his team continue to do so. Thank you, David. I'm submitting quality SOAR applications with a little from my Social Security friends. Every slide hereafter should just say communication, communication, communication. Um, but we'll do over a few other best practices tips. Um, again, Social Security Threat and Field Office is paramount to our success. And um, some of the tips would be just knowing your adjudicator and your claims representative. I know I've been doing it for several years now, so it's given me the opportunity to speak to some of the same people you know, day after day or week after week. And um, one of the things that I found with the adjudicator, the claims representative at the field office are just wonderful. Um, wonderful people, like I said before, they're always there to help, extremely knowledgeable, and when they're going over my application, if they have a question, they will just call me and, um, you know, ask me the questions, assist me in any way they can. As far as the adjudicators know, I've really gotten to know most of the adjudicators, I think, um, at our Trenton um, location. Now and then I, I run on a new adjudicator, and what I found to be most helpful is Han introducing myself is really introduce SOAR and let them know how SOAR can actually help them. Um, and and that's been, that really has been key. Um, I just want to pick up on what Diane sure. just said because um, they have their own medical model that they use to, um, for lack of a better word, grab applications of how they're supposed to be adjudicated. And really Really, Diane taking that time to explain and educate a new uh, DDS examiner on the SOAR process and how uh, it can be used to assist them in making their decision and making their life a little easier, making their work a little easier, because all the legwork Diane has already done for them, if you think about it. Um, it, it that's, again, she said communication, collaboration, that's really the key. That's the key because they understand uh, the impact that SOAR can have and the assistance that that's provided to them. Uh, they will certainly buy into the uh, into the SOAR process. Yes, yes. Thank you, David. Okay, what medical evidence will, you, will your adjudicator require for various impairments? Um, I, I really don't think that um, there's any questions with regards to this. But what I will say. Um, for most of the individuals that I work with, um, they have not received any type of treatment for years. Um, so I often come a across the last medical records. What I will do is I know that the indicator is going to want, say, a recent medical eval or a recent psychiatric eval. So one of the first things that I want to do after they're screened and found appropriate for SOAR, I'll try to schedule and get the individual into um, various types of treatment so I will have current medical records for the adjudicator. Otherwise, I will have that CE that coming up. Um, how much information does the adjudicator need in the order of support? I think most of the uh, information that Anne prepares in her MSR and the, uh, the additional medical evidence that she's able to gather, that kind of covers it pretty much to a T. Uh, the function report helps out as well um, because it paints a complete picture for that adjudicator in order to make a, a decision. In the event where the MSR is lacking something, that's where the CE comes in, and that's why Diane is able to collaborate again with that DDS examiner to get that additional information or bring the client in um, for their consultative examination. Thank you, David. And um, the reopenings of prior filings, I actually only had this happen once. That's where the manager at DDS was very helpful for me. Um, and 
what would you suggest if anyone um, had some feelings about whether the, the case was closed um, too quickly or if key elements of the case appear to be overlooked? I would definitely try to, you know, ask the manager um, to discuss your findings, specifics, such as um, pointing to medical records, first of all, first and foremost. Um, and like I said, I have done that only once. I don't call manager for willy-nilly things, but when I really did need our manager, he was there and he did reopen the case. <coughs> excuse, excuse me. Um, and in terms of uh, the claims representative, uh, requiring uh, uh, you know, uh, requiring certain items. Um, it, it, that's that collaboration with uh, with the the, the, the so, uh, caseworker. Um, it, it's critical if we need uh, something. Let's say an appointment release or where the client is staying, or even in order to obtain uh, a bank book, or um, in many cases our um, our um, once the case is approved, uh, we'll need a representative payee. Diane is able to collaborate with uh, the, the local, uh, you know, uh, representative payees that are able to assist this, their client. Or in some can cases, uh, uh, you know, family members um, in order to get this case paid. Uh, so that's that's the type of. Um, additional issues that we may require. But it, certainly at the initial application, Diane brings in such a terrific complete package that there is really no uh, follow-up required at that initial stage at all. Thank you, David. And I apologize for the coughing. Dave and I are both discovering from that illness. <laughs> okay. Um, Definitely, we want to maintain communication among all of our partners. Um, that's that's really key. Um, the process, you want to make sure that it is running smoothly um, with the SS claims representative and the adjudicator. And I've never known it not to, so I, do, I don't know behind the scenes if it's ever been bumpy, but I, I've never considered that at all. Um, let's see. We, as David said before, um, I am in constant contact with David um, or his any one of his staff at um, Social Security, and it, no matter how, how large or how small my, my question is or dilemma, there is always someone there to look into it, um, and more often than not, they take the time then and there to look into it, when, especially when I have the individual with me. I'm really lost which way to, to go um, with an application for them. Um, and, and oftentimes, one of the problems um, that does come up, and communication is great, is when the individual um, is receiving benefits um, and has a representative payee, but remember who that person is. Um, so I, I do run into that and I should say, too often. Uh, or they did receive benefits and cannot, could not remember that they did, and we were able to look into that. And again, and it's just guide me as to how to proceed with each individual. And as I've said before, um, we have large collaboration, and this is only a few of the agencies or institutions um, in our collaboration, but these are who I receive most of my referrals from. Um, when I first began, they were coming directly from the Board of Social Services, and as time went on, you know, we just, we grew, and where people, you know, really saw the, the benefits of the SOAR process and how, and like I said, David is just our, our biggest advocate. So. Um, the soup kitchen came on board, um, entry programs in our area, they've come on board. The local the local hospital especially makes many referrals. 
and um, the C Center, which is almost almost a year um, in Renton right now. And um, these places also provide me with on-site um, rooms, libraries, where I can actually meet with individuals. This yeah. has been very and helpful. And this is where, uh, you know, the, the local city government uh, county government comes together, and we have representatives from the local government, from the county, uh, you know, uh, office on addiction, and, and stuff. We are they the value of the SOAR process? They've bought into it, and this is at the high levels. We're able to communicate and allocate the resources necessary uh, in order to continue with with the SOAR model. Yes, the C Center is wonderful. We have um, individuals there that are helping um, with the ID. We have Mercer Alliance and Homelessness there. The ID project. We we have a nurse on staff. We just need to have um, unsheltered outreach going on. We've got a senior case management. Little, it's scoop nuts. It's it's really and primary goal again is is housing. Um, so it was exciting news for us. I did also want to say that the New Jersey Department of Corrections has been a great asset too. Um, they're also one of those institutions that have agreed to provide free medical records, and they've just been wonderful. If I submit an application at four o'clock, I'll have my records usually by five o'clock same day. They're just they're wonderful. All right. Um, I already talked about that. Um, oh, for, for myself, one of the one of the most important next to communication would be the completion and utilization of Social Security Form 3288. And for many of my clients, they've never been in treatment. There aren't any medical records. They've been homeless for years. Uh, a lot of the individuals have had traumatic brain injury or they've had years of substance abuse and just various reasons. The memory is very poor. We have a neurodevelopmental disability where, you know, at this point in time, some people don't know where they were born. They don't know who their, what their parents' names were. So it's really been a block for me in order to assist them, not only with their Social Security application on how to proceed, but also getting them the proper ID, getting them any benefits, that will hold them over for the time the end and ultimately to get them housed. Um, as David said before, um, some counties do um, have five business days before they back to you with regards to um, the CFSI SSDI application status, but it's rented in um, IFAX, the 3288 and 6096 over, and I am immediately place that call, and once they recognize that the form is there, then we begin to discuss um, the past history, and that, again, is soup to nuts because it's past awards, denials, the appeal history, um, oftentimes, you know, just verifying the date of birth, social security number, um, everything that we, we mentioned before. So really the key to Social Security and SOAR is communication, um, and that just continues to grow. Copy 3288. And again, um, Social Security is always, always available to provide any guidance um, to to myself and Andrea, when Andrea was also in Mercer County doing store. And every Friday, um, in addition to whenever I do have a question, every Friday at 4.30 is my telephone appointment time with David or whoever he has there to help me look up claims. Um, they will help me look up to see, you know, if, if there's been a decision Sometimes if there's anything missing, who the adjudicator is, what the telephone number is, um, 
the award has been um, made, um, just whatever information is out there. And, and that's critical for me, too, because, you know, sometimes we don't always catch that there's an award right away. And by having those weekly conference calls, we've had where Diane's been waiting two and three months for a seriously, uh, you know, uh, ill uh, person, and all of a sudden there's an award, and we find out about it at the earliest possible moment so that the person uh, doesn't have to wait two and three weeks even after the DDS decision has been made. And I, and I think that's critical. And then Diane's able to get that person into my office, an updated interview as quickly as possible with a representative payee if one is needed, um, or various other things that we need in order to pay that person um, as quickly as possible. So that, that, that collaboration and communication really is critical, and you need that buy-in. I would suggest that you establish that great liaisonship with your local Social Security office. Uh, you know, if, if they're not aware of the SOAR process uh, or, or some aware of it, you know, explain to them the benefits of it, the benefits not only uh, you know, to them, but really to the client, and that's where we're both there for. Uh, both the store caseworker and, and Social Security is there for the client every step of the way, from initial application to uh, the award letter, and it really doesn't end uh, there as well, because we continue to provide Diane um, with ongoing communication that if uh, then a follow-up, uh, you know, uh, a review of their case, uh, if you will, a redetermination, uh, whether medical or non-medical, within a year. We're able to get that so that the person doesn't lose their benefits that Diane has worked so hard to pay to that person, as in possibly in the past, because in answer the questionnaire or uh, what have you. Um, and because of uh, availability and um, to Social Security funds, that they deserve, able to get through assistance of Diane, uh, housing, uh, you know, and various other government programs that may be available to them, VA, for instance, or various other things. So it, it's, I, I think it's critical. This is where we come in. That collaboration and communication is critical, and I hope that you can establish that in your communities as well. Yeah. So, point um, uh, to Pam. Thanks, Did and Diane. Really appreciate your um, presentations, and I think folks are benefiting from the fact that you have such a great collaboration. You're both presenting in the same uh, office, so I think it made such a great conversation. And I'm hoping that we have some great questions. They are starting to come in. Um, but thanks again, and let's see, we have a question here, David. Uh, David, as an SSA district manager, how are you able to assist Diane with obtaining the barcode? I thought that came from DDS. Yeah, and there was a little misunderstanding. I assist Diane with the DDS adjudicator's name uh, and uh, the uh, the supervisor or the manager's name within DDS. Diane, on the other hand, calls or contacts that DDS examiner or the supervisor at DDS, and they're able to provide the barcode. Unfortunately, from the Social Security end, I am not able to provide the barcode as as the as the, uh, the workflow goes. That's still helpful because you can provide. Diane, the DDS adjudicator's contact information, um, which is... And that's critical because I'm not sure how you could work without knowing who your DDS examiner is unless you wait for them to contact you uh, weeks or sometimes even months down the road. Right. That's, that's absolutely correct. Here's another question for David and then Diane as well uh, to chime in. We have a SOAR process, but I don't think it's in writing. How can we get our SOAR process in writing? Diane said it is her guide. But I would suggest, again, if you go back to our presentation uh, in the beginning, we established that terrific uh, SOAR collaborative 
in Mercer County where we have um, we put all our heads together basically, and we memorialize we 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 put down on paper uh, a workflow that will work for both Social Security and for for DDS and for uh, you know Diane and and other sort uh, workers. We were able to put that together so that we can follow it along together so that we know we have that checklist. We're able to do that. So I would suggest is that you could definitely take our model, which um, I just presented to you, again, on the upper left-hand corner and also on the uh, SAMHSA store uh, website. Um, and it's right up there. Uh, Pam is putting it up there. Um, and tailor it to your own uh, needs, to your own benefits. So you can even print that out, take it to your local Social Security office, and, and start a conversation and say, you know, we, we heard this webinar. Uh, it sounded like it works for them in, in Trenton, New Jersey. Maybe we can set something up like this locally that may work for us as well, or certainly modify it or whatever. We're, you know, you're, you're certainly welcome to, to take that and, and run with it. Good. Um, that's very helpful advice. We have a question from Go ahead, okay. Diane. Chime in, please. I was going to say that my guide that I was referring to, honestly, is more so the 3288 uh, because oftentimes I don't know. Um, if I get, I don't know where you are in the application process. Um, I can't tell you how many times I thought that I was going to be doing a new application and the person was already in the process or they were at the hearing level. Um, I've also had um, um, disabled adult children um, where th there's just been so many different things that have come up that that 3288 and my ability to talk with someone in the field office has just been so beneficial and really tells me which way to proceed. Great. Yes, uh, very helpful because you have in the New Jersey SOAR process uh, how to send in the 3288 and the response uh, time for getting that back to you, the SOAR caseworker. So we'll go to a question from San in New Mexico. Here in New Mexico, DDS is four hours away. Also, our DDS will send our clients to their doctors for a CE if client does not have enough medical report. I think the question would be, since DS is so far away, I'm wondering if the concern is that the CE doctor is also quite a distance away, so transportation would be an issue getting there. And I do know that was an issue in New Jersey at one point, sending folks out of state, even though uh, the distance wasn't quite far. So David, any suggestions, or Diane, based on your experience on how to avoid a CE that okay. the person is able to get to. Well, it, it's, it, 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 just to take a step back, probably the best way to avoid TE to begin with is really to have a complete MSR uh, and put in and try to get as much medical evidence to support um, the allegation. The whole key with a medical decision and completeness of medical decision is to have as much independently verifiable medical evidence as possible. And that's really the key. If you can remember, you know, besides collaboration and communication out of this webinar, it's really independent, verifiable medical evidence. And Diane really is great at getting as much information about that. It's one thing to allege something that they have psychosis or they have this or they have that, but you really need independent, verifiable medical evidence and as much as possible recent independent verifiable medical evidence um, with an MSR, and that could avoid uh, and has avoided for us many CEs, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a, a, as possible. Right. And if you're a doctor that you're using to sign off on the MSR, it's a mental health condition that we're claiming um, as the disability, that hopefully the doctor um, will be able to complete a psychiatric evaluation or mental status exam. Also, Social Security on a few occasions now actually affect me their psychiatric evaluation that they're hoping the doctors would fill out. 
they have um I'm not always able to get a doctor at that time um and still trying to avoid the C E. They have the the educators have allowed me to sell the psychiatric evaluation. They've allowed an EPN to fill it out. They've allowed another um, social worker at the shelter to fill one out. Not that any one of those evaluations is strong evidence, but the composition of those two or three does speak volumes. Um, and I have avoided CE for an individual, one that I'm thinking of right now, just based on doing that. So that's another way to... Um, um, to avoid a CE. The other thing is that generally Social Security will try to schedule CEs in uh, in a close by geographic area, and if there's an issue at times with e even payment, if you contact the DS adjudicator, there may be a way of assisting individual with paying for transportation. Um, but they, they definitely, I've never heard of anybody sending four hours away for a C. Um, not only they will contract out with a local doctor, a psychiatrist, psychologist, uh, various other, um, you know, depending on the disability uh, doctors, and try to um, to them as local as possible. Uh, but I but I think the the point that we're both trying to make is really as much as possible to try to avoid the CEs. Uh, by getting uh, as much independent, verifiable medical evidence as possible and closely working with the DDS adjudicator. Diane's great with that because she follow, as much as she follows up with me at Social Security, I'm not the one that's right, making yeah. a medical decision. <laughs> she, she follows up constantly with DDS examiners, asking them if they have enough information, if there's anything else that can be supplied from her uh, you know, in order to make a complete uh, decision uh, from their end. Great advice. So hopefully Suzanne um, will take some of that and see if she can, um, you know, have her e evaluations either um, done through the MSR or utilizing the applicant's own doctor to be to be um, a contract to do the CE exam, but you can also, um, you know, get your Sortier Center liaison involved uh, to help, you know, work out a solution, which brings us to the next question, where your Sortier Center liaison may be of uh, assistance as well as your local Social Security office. So we have another question in from Angie. How do we identify if there is a SOAR contact in our local SSA office? Um, Good question, Angie. Yeah. I, I think that you, you you really need to go in, uh, speak to, um, introduce yourself, speak to the management with the local Social Security office, uh, and explain to them what who you are, what the SOAR process is. They may or may not be familiar with the SOAR process, so you may want to start that collaborative. It could be just collaborative between you and Social Security. We have a very broad collaborative with various different agencies state, local, federal, uh, and, and things of that nature. But it doesn't have to be. You can be, you know, it could be, um, you know, one agency such as Dan with, with Social Security um, where you have that buy-in. You can use um, our New Jersey SOAR process as a model um, to, um, to base conversation on uh, when you come into the office. And, you know, they'll assist you with, you know, appointing a lead person uh, that, you know, that they'll familiarize themselves with the SOAR process, understand or modify a workflow that works for them in within their community or within their office, and that's how you get the conversation going uh, off the ground so that they really understand um you know what the process is about. I had a little bit of a background, so because uh, we had a SOAR process in New York where I came from originally, um, so that you know, was very beneficial to me, and I was very open when I got to Trenton to uh, uh, creating that uh, positive environment uh, within Mercer County, within Trenton here, with Diane, with, with Andrea, and with all the partners, with all the SOAR partners that we have here. And I'm sure your local 
office be open to that as well. Great, David. And again, reach out to your SOAR uh, TA Center liaison who can assist with uh, putting you together with your uh, the SSA district manager and even the area director um, or regional office level. So you can find out who your SOAR liaison is by going to the SOAR website, uh, finding um, your state, click on your state, and you'll, you'll have the contact right there. And she can put you in contact also with your uh, SOAR state or local leadership to see if we can do that contact. Because as Diane said, it is so important that point of contact at the local office or she would not be able to, um, you know, get the information in that SSA and DDS needs. So really helpful. So here's a question for David first and Diane uh, to chime in. So this has to do with the weekly call that you have set up with, with Diane. So it sounds like that hour or so call is time out of your very busy schedule. But do you find that this one hour or so saves time in the long run? And how can I um, talk to our local SSA point of contact about um, co Insta a, a weekly call like that. Again, it all begins with communication and collaboration. The more you get to know a uh, local store caseworker, or in in this case, your local security offices, it may not be necessarily my counterparts. You know, like a manager. You're right. It may be too much for them to take on or whatever. But as always. And I'm not there. If I'm out doing something, if I'm, you know, doing presentations or I'm out of, out of state or somewhere uh, on social security business, I always have backups. I have an extremely bright assistant district manager. I have supervisors there, claims representatives. They're all aware of Diane and who she is um, and who our partners are in the SOAR process that we can assist them. So it's not necessarily me because sometimes I can't be there. You're right. But um, somebody else will pick up and assist Diane. And it's not an hour. It's really not an hour. Uh, you know, we go over the cases that Diane has pending. Uh, some cases, if they're at the hearing level, um, they're, gonna, they're there, unfortunately, for, you know, a while. So there may be no changes from week to week or even month to month, unfortunately. Uh, but in DDS, things move a lot quicker. So... Um, and that's where the buying comes in. It does save time. It saves time because if I'm able to get to a, a positive decision as early in the process as possible, the case is not sitting with me. So there has to be this huge buy-in from my side because I want that case is paid as quickly as possible, and that's the end goes well. So we, we're working towards a common goal, and that's serving the person who needs to be paid as quickly as possible if the decision comes in. It didn't have these calls, like I said earlier, it could take a week, two weeks, or three weeks, or maybe a month for somebody to send a letter to the soup kitchen and see Cyan to say, oh, your case has been allowed, please come in. Like this, Cyan's already working on it by Friday, trying to get that person into the office so that we can start paying by next week. Well, it sounds like, you know, SSA and SOAR have uh, the same goal, to help people um, receive their disability, get paid as quickly as possible. And um, you very clearly um, let us know that the time you spent with Diane really saves time on run and can help your SOAR applicant um, really receive their benefits a lot sooner. Um, especially if maybe they already have a winning application and, and you as a SOAR provider can really help them, um, you know, get connected to their benefits quicker. So thanks for that. And we yeah. couldn't, it, that updated interview couldn't have been facilitated better without Diane because, mm -hmm. uh, it, 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 you know, before when I used to get, or if it's not a SOAR case, just to give you an example, if I send a letter and the person doesn't show up, I send another letter, and then I have to close the case out. So in waiting months, sometimes years, for a person to get approval, it's heartbreaking to have to deny the person because I can't find them. 
and, uh, or they're on the streets or they're somewhere else where I can't find them. And it, it, this is where Diane is invaluable because she has contact with folks in the soup kitchen, at, at the rescue mission, on the streets, uh, in the hospitals, at various other places um, where you can get the, that person to interview by Tuesday, let's say. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the collaboration that we're talking about here. Another right. cool part too, when I do when I do call and I find out that someone has been um, received an award, I'm so notified if they need a representative payee, and that really that's crucial to know ahead of time because one, it is so difficult at times to get many of these individuals to Social Security office for various reasons. This way, we've got everything in place, um, and we get everything done in that one visit versus going there, having to come back, and it's just and angers the clients. So we get everything done, you know, on day one. So that's another critical component of when I speak with David or his assistant manager or whoever um, one of his team is that I get that information out ahead of time because that usually does not that never comes. I believe in the letter of approval, so that is definitely critical for me. Point um, to make, Diane. So to remind folks that we will be taking questions uh, for the next few minutes, uh, and you could ask those questions by typing your question into the Q and A panel. Um, we'll, we will be taking questions by phone, but just to remind you, if you do have a question, to get it in, and if we don't have time to answer, we'll be sure to get it answered um, after the webinar. So we have a question that relates to the protective file date. Um, I know that the protective file date is an SSA um, tool, um, as was mentioned, but our local Social Security office really doesn't want us to do a protective file date because it adds time to the um, the decision, or it adds time to the um, processing of the claim. But Diane said that she's able to get, get the case in, the completed application, in much earlier. How can I get buy in from our local SSA office to establish a procedure for um, uh, establishing the protective file date with our SOAR program? David? And Diane. Um, again, it's, it's communications, Pam. It's, uh, you know, uh, procedure so that's that's first of all uh, you know anybody has the right in writing or orally to request a protective filing and they have 60 days when which to be able to complete an application um, you can certainly use our uh, model that we have uh, you know on a store uh, website you know, it, it, there's also a program's operations manual that you can refer to. Uh, but the whole key is is that, and, and to be honest with you, I was a little apprehensive too when we were starting out because to, to take two months to do a claim, um, it, it does. T it seems like a very long time. Diana takes two months to do a claim. Uh, so even some of the hardest uh, cases had um, where the person was hard to reach or some of the medical evidence wasn't that easy to obtain and, and what have you, uh, has never taken two months. So uh, the, the key is you want buy-in. You want the Social Security person, uh, manager, or whoever you're going to be, uh, whoever gonna, is going to be your liaison to be on your side and, and really to see the value in this, the end result in this, that the overall time will be diminished because this is such a wonderful product that the completeness of the application, the uh, amount of legwork that the store caseworker does is invaluable to the process. So the overall process time will be significantly diminished to get a decision, an appropriate decision. Mm -hmm. Will always be an allowance? No. Unfortunately, we do get denials. Mm -hmm. But because of the completeness and uh, tirelessness of uh, and dedication of people like Diane and Andrea uh, and, you know, soul workers certainly on this panel uh, that are listening to us now, that's what makes the overall time go 
down. So there is value. There is huge benefit to the caseworker, to SSA, but more importantly to the client. Right. The last thing you said, David, is, is really key, that there is value spending a little more time on the front end uh, because it will save so much on the back end um, in help if the person is allowed, um, you know, to get, get that process through uh, much quicker. And again, Diane had mentioned, both of you, uh, that it is, uh, you know, this collaboration happens because of the two-way communication that's happened over time. So I think that's a great uh, point to make. At building and sustaining, uh, you know, your relationships. Uh, you mentioned meetings, um, so you monthly meetings. Can you talk a little bit about these meetings um, and who sits on these meetings? And would it be helpful to invite, um, you know, individuals from, let's say, the hospitals or other mental health? Um, organizations uh, which may provide referrals or funding. Um, can you talk a little bit about the structure of your steering committee? Sure, uh, Pam. Well, with the steering committee, as I said, since 2009, and uh, the key was to get in, in the steering committee decision makers, um, the people that are able to allocate resources both their own and possibly to try to go out to the county or to the state house and obtain additional resources that um, that be uh, used to further the the SOAR process um, and to show uh, you know whether it's jails or the state house or the county or the city um, the value in in utilizing the SOAR process. So we've uh, constantly have been bringing on. On, um, you know, hospital administrators, uh, mental health agencies, um, county, county jail, um, county, board. The county board of social services. All of these uh, folks are critical, and the, the key has been really um, that we didn't lose momentum. A lot of sort, uh, you know. Um, Collaborative thought out great, and 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 everybody's on board. And within six months, um, you know, people kind of lose interest, or they have other important initiatives or whatever. We've made our point. We have a standing meeting uh, where all of us, Diane, myself, and all these other folks that I've mentioned before, Pam, you've joined us in a couple of meetings where we are committed to coming there. We have a DDS person that joins us mm -hmm. as much as he could. Um, you know, so it, it, that helps from that perspective. We have attorneys, nonprofit attorneys, mm -hmm. law projects that assist us with uh, uh, filing for hearings and actually going to the hearings, utilizing the SOAR process. Um, and we couldn't have that line without the head of the law project personally involved with this. So, again, if you can get commitment from your leaders, within your own communities. It doesn't have to be them, you know, following up. They can delegate that to their assistant or to the claims representative or to whoever, but as long as you have that ongoing commitment um, and, and uh, constant communication with these uh, folks, I think that's been critical to sustaining um, our uh, Mercer County uh, workflow and process. So I think that's a really um, appropriate place to end your presentations because it just shows um, that it does sustain a store initiative does take um, commitment, dedication, um, and communicating, whether that's over the phone, through having meetings, um, you know, up, updating the store process um, to respond changes um, that are going in SSA. Um, I think it's really a testament to the success of your SOAR program. So we are out of time, but I do want to thank you, David and Diane, for um, re, uh, re being available to reschedule the first webinar. Um, and I'm so glad, I think we all are glad that, that you're both feeling so much better. I appreciate you readjusting your schedule to accommodate um, this webinar series so that we could not uh, miss out 
on your uh, SSA collaboration talk. So again, I, I just want to thank you both for your wisdom and experience. Um, I'm sure our community will be better for it. So we all have time. I just want to remind folks to um, do the evaluation that will come at the end when you begin to click out. We do value the information that you give. It lets us know what you want to uh, see on these webinars, so please take some time to complete it. And again, thanks a lot for joining us on this webinar series, and have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you, Pam. Thank you.